What is going on everyone? It is Alex Goddard here back again with a brand new Doctor Who video and my first ever Doctor Who convention is finally here! I'm absolutely so excited for Worldcon today. It's going to be an absolutely amazing day. Meeting so many celebrities today from Doctor Who. Likes of Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Paul McGann. As well as many more companions, actors and actresses. Boy, it's going to be one hell of a day. So make sure you stop your seats in for an amazing day with me. My first ever Doctor Who convention is going to be something, something special. Because I remembered that last year ago, I did a vlog of the Doctor Who experience and now a year later you're getting another vlog of my first ever Doctor Who convention. Now the thing is I'm not a huge you know big massive planner at these things I know that there's going to be like a big massive plan when I meet up with Adam Time Lord Fishwick and Iceland 99 of who we're going to see and you know what time periods we're going to be set on but the most important thing is to see everybody get something signed and enjoy the day most importantly so make sure you strap yourselves in guys sit back Back and relax and let's go through my vlog of Wolfcon. Enjoy guys. So everyone, this is what I'm taking on with me to Wolfcon. Now it may look like a lot of DVDs, but that's the thing. I'm gonna get one person to sign each and every one of these DVDs. Mainly because the Green Death, I'm gonna get Katie Manning to sign. The Two Doctors, I'm going to get Colin Baker and Nicola Bryan to sign. Resurrection of the Daleks, obviously Peter Davison is going to get it signed. Remembrance of the Daleks, I'm going to get Sophie Aldred to sign it. The Deadly Assassin is going to be for Philip Hinchcliffe, who will also be there, who did the amazing series of season 13, season 12 and season 14 of Tom Baker's era in Doctor Who. Then we also have the Three Doctors, which I'm getting Stephen Fawn to sign, and he's the guy who played Omega in that story. Then I've got a choice of either getting John Leeson to sign The Invisible Enemy or School Reunion. And then we've got the Sontone Experiment, which I'm getting Bob Baker to sign. Revelation of the Daleks, I'm getting Grain Harper to sign the director. And Trial of a Time Lord Mind Warp, I'm getting Philip Martin to sign as well. So, throughout all of these DVDs, now, if I don't have any of you know, something to sign for at least some other people who I'll meet, like, separately, then there's always, like, a little photo or a little picture at their desk, which you can buy and sign, you know, with them. So, that will be at least good, but I'm going to hopefully get the majority of these DVDs signed today, and I hope you're excited for this amazing day. And anyway, guys, I'm going to be getting off going, so let's go to Vorpcon. We're currently queuing for Colin Baker and as of course Hello. Adam Tamlos Fisher, you've seen him before and someone you may or may, may not have seen on the channel. Hey. Hey Rob. Vlog set. Yeah. Rob. I just changed my mic. Anyway, oh, over there we're just queuing up for Colin, Baker's, for Colin Baker's photo shoot, shoot so hopefully we'll be able to get a good photo with him. Definitely put, put it, you know, in you know the video of course. Boy, do you feel like I'm so nervous right now? It's just because I've never ever seen anyone in Doctor Who before up close. It's just, oh, it's just so exciting. Just going to get that little photo. Then we're probably just going to move on to maybe like a photo shoot maybe with Paul McGann or, or, or Peter Davidson. It should be really good. But you can't really hear that my uh, friends are both doing their vlogs. Doing it all at the same time. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys in a bit. What do you think, Alex? <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, but it's probably just to get the best effect, really. <laughs> You're so excited, eh, you Adam? How was our photo shoots? He's a lovely man. Just Definitely. Because I met him in Cardiff, um, it must have been a year ago, actually. Mm. But I couldn't get a photo shoot with him. I was just so happy to finally meet him now. Yeah. Again. Mm. That's great. I mean, honestly, I mean, even his handshake is just so knowingly that you know, like, you know, I can take care of this guy. He could be my perfect grandfather if my grandfather was still alive. Yeah, yeah. alright then. Firstly, William Hartnell, and if not, like, just because with the look of him now, yeah, so cuddly and so warm. Hey, Adam, I'm filming you. You're filming me. What's going on, eh? Thought it would never happen. we finally got it. There's my photo with Colin Baker. First ever doctor I've met in real life. You know what? Life has already been so great. Meeting Colin Baker, boy, he's such a very cuddly figure. I mean, honestly, if he was my granddad, then, you know, I would be so, so happy. But I'm so, so glad that I finally got a photo with somebody from Doctor Who. I mean, honestly, you know when I did that video, will I ever meet my heroes? Well, a year later, this has happened. I mean, this is just incredible for me. Just one of, like, say, many doctors I'll be seeing along today. But we're going to probably get a photo shoot maybe with Paul McGann and Peter Davison. Definitely going to get a photo with all of the doctors today. Maybe a companion or two. But honestly, there is more to come on this vlog. So make sure you stick around. Don't go away because more is coming. Paul McGann, the king of Big Finish. Now, I've only listened to about two of his Big Finish stories, Invasion of Mars and uh, Storm Warning. Did you just fall off the fell of the rope? I just threw it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we are so, so excited to meet Paul McGann. Of course, Rob, he's listened to some big, big finishes in this time. Yeah. That's a bit of a sentence, big, big finishes. Big, big finishes. <laughs> Oh, big finish. We we love love yeah, definitely. So we're just hopefully going to um, wait around until Paul McGowan comes through those doors. We'll be getting another photo shoot, which means, yes, just like with Colin, another one with Paul McGowan. Let's have it. Thank you very much. Guess who I found? Mr. K9 here. Okay, Master. Yeah. You know what? I used to have a smaller one of these K9 versions, but still, it's always good to meet K9 again. I hope he's going to get us um, John Leeson to sign um, either School Reunion or Invisible Enemy. Don't know which one, but I'm thinking maybe both. That'd be quite good. Or maybe just the one. I think maybe School Reunion, just because I like the um, the first time that I met K9. Well, obviously, was in School Reunion when I watched uh, D Doctor Who back in 2006. So, yeah, I might do that, but still. K9, effective master. That's a great impression. See you later, guys. Well... Two doctors are down, one more to go. There he is. A again, my teeth are so white in that. I think I grinned about too much, I imagine. <laughs> Honestly. So we've done Colin Baker, we've done Paul McGann, that's two doctors on my list. Now I've just got to track down the last one, Peter Davison. Now his autograph is £20. It's the biggest and most expensive autograph in this uh, warp convention today. So I've got a lot of money with me. I'm got, probably going to get maybe whatever money I have left. See what I can get signed or see if I can get another autograph with somebody. But yeah, two doctors are down.
of Resurrection of the Dalek, signed by Peter Davison himself, and now we're in queue to for John Leeson, and I'm getting John Leeson to sign. I made my decision to get a school reunion signed. I bought this when I was six years old, so I thought it would be the, the best thing for him to sign. For me, you know, K9 back in the day was, you know, brilliant, so hopefully this, you know, will definitely give me more, you know, good memories to enjoy, but honestly, you need to check around this place. This place is absolutely packed. It's literally just packed through the roof. People are queuing up to get signatures and autographs. It's just absolutely crazy, honestly. There's going to be a load more photos in the video, so... Plus, I'm hopefully going to get a photo with Sophie Aldred and um, just many more, really. I mean, the size of the, this convention, this is what I've... This is my first ever experience. The amount of people in this place is unbelievable. Honestly, guys, there's so much here, and I cannot wait to explore more. So, I just met up with Sophie Aldrin and I got her to sign my favourite story of all time, Remembrance of the Daleks, as well as I met Nicola Bryant and Colin Baker, which I got both of them to sign the two Doctors, and that's my favourite Sith Doctor story. And then also we met Peter Davison, I know. Unfortunately, I think I've missed the, um, the photo shoot with Peter Davison, but I got him to sign Resurrection of the Dark, so that's the main thing, really. I wanted to get a photo with him, but the thing is, I kind of missed the photo shoot, which I'm not sure if he's doing it right now, unless if I can join it, but you never know. If I don't get a photo with him, at least I've got two doctors, Paul McGann and Colin Baker. That will still be an amazing achievement for today. I've already met so many people here today, and I can't believe that just once-in-a-lifetime opportunities for me doesn't really happen because I'm hardly, you know, out here doing all this convention stuff. I'm literally in work doing loads of pots and pans and whatnot, but here I am, and I just cannot believe that this is my first time and I'm meeting so many people. So many new faces from YouTube, from Doctor Who. It's just been an amazing experience and I'm going to show you all of the photos from today. All of the DVDs, all of the signatures. So, boy. Let's see if we can find like, some, some more photo shoots with some people. I'm thinking I might get a signature or maybe get like a photo with Philip Hinchcliffe who did um, season 13 and season 14 and season 12 of uh, Doctor Who, Tom Baker's era. I'm hoping if I get a photo shoot with him, that'd be great. If not, maybe a signature of like, my favourite um, story in his era, The Deadly Assassin, so that'd be very, very good. So yeah, we'll see how we get on. just had a little bit of a chat with a recent subscriber, Wingy Media. I'll put the link in the description down below to his channel, but I met up with him for the first time ever. I saw his tweet of going to Worldcon, and I thought, I have to meet him, I have to speak with him, and he's such a great guy. He has an amazing channel filled with some great content. Definitely subscribe to his channel, because he's definitely worth a sub. I mean, most of his opinions and most of his videos are mainly concerned around Doctor Who and he just has that opinion that you can't really disagree with but all the time he's always right in my opinion he's just such an amazing guy he has a really great podcast and he just lives very very close to where I live so surely enough if there's any chance of him doing a podcast I could either tweet him or Instagram him and I can be on his podcast and that would be absolutely amazing but yeah, it, would, it was such of a pleasure just to meet him. I mean, surely enough, you'll see the photo in a minute, but it was just amazing just to see him face to face. And it was also really great just to chat and meet up with other YouTube channels concerning around Doctor Who. I know there was five Who fans as well, and I saw a couple other people as well. Again, their names are a bit unfamiliar, but the most important thing really was just to meet them, introduce myself, and you never know, there could be like a chance of getting more subscribers, but it was a really great chance to talk to Wing Wingy Media, especially because he's by far one of my favorite YouTubers of all time, because he's just that awesome at uh, producing Doctor Who content. And at the moment now, most of the photo shoots are becoming 
more and more bigger because of Katie Manning. She's growing really, really popular right now. I'm trying to currently find Philip Hinchcliffe so we can sign my uh, DVD of The Deadly Assassin and maybe I'm going to get a chance to sign somebody, um, another DVD from somebody else. But then again, there's like loads of photo shoots and maybe a panel which I might even go and have a check out right now. So hopefully, whatever I do, I'll see you there, guys, then. So you're probably wondering where I am right now. Well, I'm currently, yes. I'm currently somewhere for like a panel somewhere. Yeah, I'm in a nightclub as you can probably tell. I think I'm in the uh, Colin Baker panel. I think he's doing one right now. Let's see. Oh yeah, he is. Let me switch over. You've done an awful lot of big finish, including um, Ish, which looks at words as well. And we can't not talk about big finishes and your various cast of companions that you have. I was going to put the cover of every single one that you've done all, but I was running out of space, so I just, yeah. <laughs> There's an awful lot of things you've done. I, I guess there's still a joy in doing those and bringing all the various different stories to life. I had all those lovely extra companions I got. Um, well, there's a bloke in there, but don't put him. Um, my lovely lady speaking there. Yeah, big finish enabled my doctor no, no, to no, finish no. The, yeah. <laughs> the journey I had fondly imagined he would take over the years that my doctor was the doctor. Um, I, I can never thank big finish enough for giving me that opportunity. And if, ever, if any of you haven't heard, uh, what's it called, The Last Adventure? The Last Adventure, which is the regeneration story that Big Finish wrote for me, Nick Briggs, lovely Nick Briggs, and which fits in perfectly with the beginning of Sylvester McCoy wiggling around in my coat. Um, despite the absurdity of that, the, the story that Big Finish have constructed and explains how that happens is sheer genius and I'm so proud of it and it gave me the ending that I wanted so uh, I'll cheer and finish it after there was a time um, just before Tom descended from Mount Olympus and decided that he had, had, having, <laughs> having originally declined um, and suddenly realised how good they are what they do and decided he would do something. But up to that point, I have done more Doctor Who stories than any other Doctor that you could have been finished. And I was quite proud of that after my inglorious start when I was fixed into touch a little earlier, I think. Um, yeah, I'm very fond of old six years, I call him. Um, obviously, I don't think of it as me, I think of it as him. And you know, I briefly was allowed to be here. Um, and I, I liked their idea of, of being brave. Because you, know, you know, we had Peter, uh, the fifth doctor, who is quiet and lovely and generous and amiable and accessible. Um, and then suddenly along came this lunatic who tried to strangle his companion, who didn't regenerate. Imagine what regeneration is. Yeah, I can't imagine you come out of that going, hello, shall we have a cup of tea? You know, it, it did your head in. And it certainly did my head in. And that first episode was the end of the series. And you had to wait four months till Doctor Who came back again but to find out what that Doctor was like. And I thought that was brave as well. You know, because that, that first story was not... I'm going to invite two people on the stage who are the stars of uh, Night of the Doctor. First of all, Emma Campbell Jones. Do we have microphones for our guests? Just once, I'm going to have to pass it to you. Emma, this is your, your first convention, isn't it? I'm not. Sorry to disappoint. No, no, my first one was oh, Gary One. Yeah. Okay, well, were you, were you a second? You, you, let me just attest. <laughs> just, just, not to worry. 
I'd like to introduce our second guest now, of course, the eighth doctor, Paul McGann. Have you, have you seen each other before, since the filming in 2013? Have we really only got one mic? Is that it? Um, have we seen, yeah, we have seen each other. We go out to the theatre together and stuff like that. We, we socialise, don't we? Do. We pick shows out the magazine and go and see them. Yeah. You can see my play. You can see your play. Do we do like cultural soirees? That's what you do when you're a swanky anchor in London. <laughs> <laughs> I played his wife as well, his dead wife. In uh, Perplex Music. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah that, that's another thing you do when you're a swanky out there. You shoot films together, don't you? <laughs> you shoot short films. Here's your mind. I'm Edward, hello. Um, so, Paul, I have to ask you first of all, how did it first come about? How were you first contacted to ask to appear in The Night of the Doctor? Um, oh, actually, we were in the... I say we, me and... Uh, um, McCoy and Colin and them, not like like some our fellows boy band. We were we were, in, we were we were in Australia. There were four of us. And we were going around Australia doing these shows, and uh, Moffat rang me when we were there. And so we were there. But uh, and he said, "You've got to keep it still. You've got to keep it secret. You can't tell the others." Um, you know, and we had this quick conversation, um, and basically, that's Moffat going, "Look, if I did the, would you be?" interested in, yeah, we had one of those kind of elliptical conversations, and I'm going, well, all right, well, send me a script. He said, no, I haven't written it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he said, but if you say yes, I will. And uh, when do you want to do it? And he said, next week. Kind of, it was one of them. <laughs> and that's how telly works, isn't it? Mostly that's how telly works, and that's how Doctor Who works. It's like, you know, uh, we start on Monday, that's how it is. Was there any, ever any point where you thought during that very small negotiation period that you wouldn't do it, it, you know, it wouldn't be the right script or, or something like that? Were you always going to do it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seemed too good to turn down. It was easy. It was going to be easy in, in, the, in the respect that it was only a day. How many, what, a day now? Two days? Uh, six minutes long. What's not to like? I don't like working too hard, so... No, seriously. So uh, it was a no-brainer, really. He's very persuasive. Indeed. Indeed. So you were literally there with Peter and, 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 and Sylvester and so Did you hint to them that you were going to be in it at all? No, which also, I felt a bit, I felt a little bit guilty. And as well, we were doing that five-ish doctors thing, which is all predicated on the idea that when, when none of us are getting asked to be in <laughs> So, um... Uh, Wait, on the 50th anniversary special thing, before the, we went out to have the interviews on stage, I was sandwiched between uh, Colin and Peter and Sylph. We were, we were watching it together, and like, we must have known then. <laughs> 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 I didn't mind, I don't, you know, the odd lie doesn't bother you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> but we know we're keeping the secrets only, only about not saying anything. That's easy, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to say anything. Okay, I won't say anything. But, um, and also, uh, Tom Baker helped my cause enormously, because he didn't tell them he was in the fifth year. Yeah. <laughs> so his was a much bigger crime than mine. So, <laughs> so mine kind of just sneaked. They forgot all about mine. In the end, anyway. Brilliant. Your thoughts when you first read those lines of, of how it went, did it feel like the Doctor? Well, actually, there was a kind of script, wasn't there? It was a sort of document. Yeah. But, but Moffat was keen, um, even on the day, Moffat was literally, I don't know, a few times, he was handing me bits of paper. And yeah, I'll say that, I said, you know, fair enough, you can, he was running it, you can work like that. Um, and, and there was stuff where, like, like at the end, there's that sort of celebrate a bit where the, the, the big Finnish companions are, are in for their name. Um, and I didn't know that that was going to happen until we did it. You know, uh, learn them. You've got to learn all the words. Uh, yeah, canon. Yeah, canonized it. Yeah, I, I know my doctor's name. No, you do. <laughs> no, you do. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, but it was canon. Uh, but it was a nice way of working. You know. Um, and I thought as well, I think, before we leave here, I mean, I just 
like it to be known that I think that it's a brilliant piece of writing. When you think what what, what someone can, he was at the top of his game. When Moffat was good, he was brilliant. You know, and he sometimes criticised for you know other things, but. When you think what he's managed to squeeze into six minutes, it's fantastic. It's a shame you couldn't see it really, but um, most of you probably have seen it. But you know, the, the stuff, it starts with a crash, and then there's Cass, and the, that, that all plays out. Then, you know, he ends up on a planet with the other sisters. He gets bored in the middle, maybe he's talking about like, yeah, but can imagine? And then there's a regeneration, all in six minutes. And, and it never felt like it was, you know, just uh, bombing along. It's, it's perfect. Yeah. So, Emma, I am going to ask you about your Doctor Who knowledge and so on and so forth. Um, were you a fan? Have you, been, have you ever watched it before you got to play Cats at all? Uh, and you, you, did you do any sort of revision beforehand? Um, I watched a little bit of um, uh, Tom Baker and Peter Davidson <clears throat> when I was in there. And I watched a little bit uh, when Chris Eccleston back as well. I'm afraid I didn't see much of Sylves. I wish I'd see more because he, he's my buddy. And, uh, uh, and now he's your mate. He's now, exactly. <laughs> so I would, have, I would have loved to see more of his stuff. Um, revision but, more. But when you were little, yeah. was it something that you followed, you know, when you were a little kid? I mean, did you watch it when it was... Yeah, yeah it was a treat. It was a treat getting was to it, see it. It was still on there, wasn't it? I mean, it was on. It was on. And, uh, and uh, I, I seem to remember even before it became fashionable to have the long rainbow scarves that everyone's got now, I was not a fan. Oh, yeah. my grandma, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you were indoctrinated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a trailblazer before you guys even thought about that. That was there. <laughs> Very small, but there. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, revision worries, well, um, I, I, I kind of looked at some old stuff actually, there's quite a lot, I was lent a box set of, uh, of Doctor Who stuff, so I kind of had a bit of a, because I, I didn't really know a lot about it, so I just had, had a quick look, as, and really quick, because actually the, the run up to our thing is super short, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a few days, and um, yeah, so I did that, and uh, I'd been in Doctor Who before as well, uh, as Doctor Kent, in uh, the wedding room song. I was the first one to die from the eye drive, the patch, with the silence, with the long fingers. Have you got your own wiki page? I don't know, do I? How do I you know? have to ask these days, don't you? <laughs> I know, I... Uh, 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 by by being the doctor. Maybe. So, you had to keep it secret, and that must have been quite difficult. I mean, because you have first of all to keep it secret from people. Any, anyone, any lies you had to tell or anything like that? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I was, um... I was going out with someone who was actually in the 15th anniversary special himself at the time. He was really early on in the episode. He was really on. Yeah, me and Sam. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, met Tristan and I were living together at the time. And he comes running up telling Clara that she's got the doctor on the phone or something. And he does that with Tristan. And um, yeah, so it was really nice being a part of this thing together, but because he's got sort of movie mates as well, it was really hard to kind of keep everything super stern because, you know, because there was a lot, we were, that was really drummed into us, wasn't it? How we shot it in Cardiff. Um, that, the, the, the day or the two days that we shot were right at the end. It was the Monday, one it after the Sunday, Sunday the Monday. They just finished the 50th. Thing. So when we got there, and they had their do, remember there was still like people doing the walk of shame and they were still strangled. Yeah, strangled. They were finding people still like laying prone in the... In the and, um, and, and, and so they built this set that we were going to use in the corner of it. And so we did that Sunday night or the Monday, whatever, literally after they just finished that. But they didn't know we were in. Um, and then I remember them checking me into a, a Cardiff hotel, Mr. Smith. You know. <laughs> And they took me out to car in, in a car with blacked out windows. Yeah. Did you get all that? Yeah. No, you did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it was all like, it's all like secret squirrel right from yeah. there. Um, I found it quite exciting though. He was on this Omega as well, which is really ominous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Omega. That's right, yeah, yeah. And every time you Possibly came out... Possibly you say Omega, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then and like, the like, exquisite. Sorry. Yeah. Not touching that. Um, but and every time he came out with his trailer as well, they had a big brolly uh, over him in case there were any yeah. um, 
So if you imagine we rode the every day, it was like that, we were able to like hide all the time, hide from helicopters and, and a couple of weeks later, I was on Twitter then, I'm seriously off it now. Get off it kids. Don't oh, don't start doing it. Um, and someone um, tweeted me and said, a friend of mine served you a sandwich <laughs> in a Cardiff hotel eight days ago. Care to comment? You know? <laughs> so it, it already kicked off then, you know, so that the, the rumour stuff gets around. And by the end, of course, I'm, as we now know, um, come, it should have gone out, the film should have gone out with the, with the 50th, it's part of that. Um, but it went out, what, 10 days early? Uh, anyone who had questions? Gentlemen, right, I assume gentlemen, apologies if I'm wrong. Put the hand up over there, shout it out. I just said, have I, have I read the Day of the Doctor novel, which expands on the, uh, your bits in it? Are you asking if they've read the Day of the Doctor novel? Yeah, yeah, because that's covered nicely. So Stephen Moffat has novelised the story, uh, and put the, the mind of the Doctor in it. I'm assuming you haven't had a chance to, uh, to, to do it. So, so you should, because he sort of expands the story and puts it into the Day of the Doctor novel as well. So, uh, so I'm not, I can't quite remember what happens, but I think you get a few more lines. And, and so on. <laughs> it would have been lovely to have cameos, but you know, this is a fast-moving show on BBC One, and you have to get through it as, much, as quickly as possible. And we come from a world as Doctor Who fans, where we'd love to see all those things, but you know, it's an all prime time audience. But I'm sure you would have loved to have been on BBC One on, on, on Saturday. <laughs> it certainly sounds like Trump's press secretary. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been um, an opportune moment. But things with Doctor Who, as, you, as we all know now, as we all know all along, it's never say never, you know, so long as people are available um, and the spirits with it, it things can happen. Things, um, but, if, I mean, the Night of the Doctor is a perfect example. It's a question of A, being available um, and the moment being right. Uh, and you want to start next week? That's, that's exactly how it is. So it, I suppose what's salutary about that is if you, or instructed, if, if you ever hear rumours, they're never true. Because Doctor Who doesn't work like that. They don't think that far ahead, generally. Um, anyway, I digress now, but, the, but really the reason is um, I just think it's too difficult. Uh, but I hope it happens. I hope we all get to have another go of it. I'd be in it. Well, you, oh yeah, I'd be in it at the drop of a hat. Um, and again, I don't know. Don't cut me on the throat here, but if someone said, "When well, you do two years, um, you know, you know that nine-month, twelve-hour day thing," in the I'd probably go. Nah. It's too hard. You know, other people should. You know, Capaldi can work that hard. Um, I, 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 I like coming up with six minutes at the end. <laughs> Being brought on as a sub, <laughs> just before the penalty shootout or something. You know what I mean? It's like that way that you can steal the glory. I don't mind. That's good. I'm happy doing that. And, and Emma, I have to ask you, you've been in it twice, would you, would you go talk to it for the third time? But would you do something different? Would you like to be a companion or, or, or battle or something like that? Also, I'd love to be a companion, but I don't know that I can now. Can I? I, 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 I don't think because I've had effectively two bites of the apple now, I think I'd have to go in as a monster with some sort of latex or something on my face, right? And I could do it, right? Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Can I take another audience question, please? Hold your hand up and make yourself known. I can see a hand there. I don't know who it's attached to, but yes, shout it out. Uh, Paul Mel, Eric Roberts is on a big finish story. Capital Force, you did one as your doctor with his last week. Did you hear that? So, would you do an Eric Roberts? I only just heard that actually uh, uh, last week. We were talking about Eric. I was talking about phoning to someone. Has anyone, incidentally, has anyone here seen Inherent Vice? Paul Thomas Anderson. Because Eric is the fulcrum of the story, he's the, the character they, they all talk about. Anyway, I recommend it highly, highly. The brilliant Joaquin Phoenix, and I'll watch anything he's in. And then Eric turns up in the middle of it, and he's fantastic. 
Um, yeah, I'd love to do one with, with uh, Eric. I'd just be so curious as to what it's like to work with him again. On, uh, on, to see on the radio. I love, the, I love working with him. He's a bit vague, Eric. <laughs> in, in the loveliest way. Um, I was like, uh, probably shouldn't be telling this story, but... <laughs> I've not told it before. It took, I think it took Eric full... When we did the thing in... Um, uh, 96. It took Eric into the second week, maybe 10 days in, to, not because I was wearing a wig, to twig that it was the same fella in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and on the set, <laughs> I think we were in the gym and I was telling him, was, hey man, I'm going, yes, Eric, Jesus, man, I've been waiting for you to like, twig to twig. Because that is really like, short hair and then, anyway, bless him. <laughs> I'm really glad to hear he's done a, um, a big finish. Yeah, I didn't know. I really didn't know that if you get a job on Doctor Who, that you are really kind of part of this Doctor Who family forever. And everyone's really cool. They're really nice. It's like a, you see the same faces again and yeah, again yeah, yeah. at dinner parties or this kind of thing. And it's, just, it's just a sound bunch. And the, it feels good. Yeah, the, 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 the conventions are, of course, they're not compulsory. You don't have to do it. I mean, I, I didn't do them for a, a while. I was just thinking, why did I want to do that? And because two weeks ago in London, Chris Eccleston did the first one that he'd, he'd ever done. And um, you know, so we, all, we were quite excited about that, you know, waiting for him. And we all wanted to be there in the morning to watch him suffer. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I never caught up until about uh, one o'clock. And I said, you know, how is it? And he said to me, I'm loving it. He said, I'm so relieved, you know, uh, he, said, I'm, he said, I'm actually quite moved by it. He was, you can tell. Uh, he said, people are just lovely. Um, and I mean, he sounded a bit like I did when I first did it. You know, it's, it's a lovely surprise that it's got a smile on its face. And, because before you do, you worry if it's just going to be too, I don't know, just too weird. Or, or people, are, or people aren't going to be nice, you know. And he, was, he was chuffed. Really chuffed. So maybe he'll do some more. Are there, any, are there any downsides to being in the, not the public eye, but the Doctor Who public eye? You mentioned Twitter earlier. Is there anything you don't like about it or, or would like to be a bit different? What, uh, what the sort of fame side of Doctor Who's been? No, not really. Um, no, if there ever was, I've forgotten. No. Um, it's funny that the, the um, Doctor Who fans are everywhere. <laughs> And sometimes it, it's the person you least expect in the room. That's the doctor. And I found that down the years. Uh, there's been a few times, you know, that you just... And it's only afterwards and you go, oh my God. In fact, um, years ago I was working at... Uh, when would this be? 19, uh, 2003, 4. And I was working at the National Theatre doing a play next door. We were doing that. They were doing a pillow man next door. It was, it was David Tennant before he was in London. And um, you know the six companies in the place, and everyone that drinks in the same bar afterwards. And I was introduced to David Tennant, and um, in this little group of people, and not for long, maybe five minutes. And he just stared at me. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> say a word. Like you know, I get just on a show, and everyone's a little bit like, and uh, and he's just like swimming like that. Like, like. <laughs> anyway, when he'd gone, I said, God, man, what, what was his problem? He was a, in a tense one. <laughs> and the fact that he was with him said, What are you nuts? That's the biggest Doctor Who fan surprise, in London. <laughs> he had this reputation already. Anyway, like, he's got a sense. Anyway, years later, when I met him, he said, Oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Have you noticed since the 50th the big resurgence in fans of the Age Doctor? Yeah, definitely. Um, and particularly in America. So, which is great, it's exciting, you know, when we go over there and we do the shows, it's, it's a laugh. Um, it's, it's, it's ironic now to think when we did, uh, in 96, you know, that pilot that we made that they call the movie now, that was specifically designed to find an American audience. You know, they, you know the, in that they were convinced that one existed, and perhaps existed in sufficient numbers that, you know, we might go to series. It didn't do it, but um, it seems, man, it's only 20 years ago. And now, really, um, North America is where it's almost like the, the engine, the driver of Doctor Who, you know. But yeah, particularly in America. Is there a difference between British fans and American fans? Um, 
I suppose only it, 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 in, in spirit, yes, yeah, slightly. Only in the American terms that the, the, there's more sort of youthful zeal about it. They won't, they, it's the pennies drop, they're, they're still about that. Whereas you know, so quite a lot of the British fans are. Uh, they're a bit long in the tooth. Or, <laughs> I don't mean like personally, but it's 50 years of it. I'm amazed. I always was amazed at, you know, particularly to meet young people. I'm not talking like student age, who've got almost like PhD knowledge, level knowledge of the thing. That's like 50 years of mythology. Uh, Americans are still slightly playing catch up, but uh, they adore it. You know. Um, and I, it's their cosplay as well, big time. Yeah, they're big cosplayers. Seriously impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the shows there, some of the shows there, you know, are, and this is a great size of a show because, of course, you know, we can speak uh, and it's relaxed and you sort of hear each other speak and look each other in the eye. Some of the American shows are so big, uh, you could have a hundred thousand there, mm -hmm. you know, in, say, over a day, two days. Say you're in Texas, or there's places where there's these purpose built. Uh, convention centers, you know, you have this and then four floors of it. So some of those shows are just too big. Um, so this is nice, we like this. Do you think you'll be joining the main range of it finish after box sets? Main range meaning? The monthly range. So like you got one every month. Like you did for years ago. Uh, that's a, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how, I don't know that side of things sufficiently to give you a... Do you want it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, so explain again, so it, it's monthly, no, you explain, you got the point. Um, <laughs> so you know what you did with, um, oh, I forget the name of the uh, Charlie Parker. Yeah. Um, India. Um, India. India yeah. Fisher, that's yeah. it, right. We did like um, trial stories every month. Do you want to do that um, again? Or was the box sets concluded? I've got a feeling that uh, presently the way we're working, you know, right now, is the way we're going to be continuing yeah. to be working. Because it just means, because um, you know, sorry, it technically it means that, but studio time, it just means like the difference between making four terms a year. Because uh, at the moment, you know, that's what we're doing now. It's got up to four terms a year. We look forward to it. They're already asking us to meet again in uh, end of November and then maybe February. So, yeah. so again, you know, they're the sessions. Uh, all I know is we're just making more. So, however, I mean, however regular they are, you know, whether it's, who cares anyway? Whether it's a difference between quarterly or monthly. Yeah. Um, do you work in a bank or something? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, 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 don't, I don't know, and I don't really care. So, um, <laughs> as long as we keep making them, yeah. And they just keep getting better and better. Again, apart from the advantage of the boom, and particularly the Americans uh, now buying as many as they are. Um, is the preparation is better, the writing improves, and uh, like I say, so it's boom time, folks. And for anyone here that hasn't listened to Big Finish or is still yet to, you know, to decide to, try it, try it. The next time you're in a car, particularly you're in a car, because they're great for cars, you know, these are stick a box up. Anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> Before we pass sentence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that, <laughs> I love, I love that actually. I love that from the moment that I met him. How about that, nerds and steel? Oh! I think you might see you after the next year, perhaps. Be a fair amount of Yes, yes. Well, I've got a question. Um, <laughs> Well, I'm sorry we didn't get to see the episode, but we got an extra nine minutes of these two, so I'd like to give you, like you, to give your appreciation, please, to Emma and to <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> you're the coolest person on the world. Oh, no. <laughs> and so it's, it's come to the end of this amazing journey. Warpcon has finally ended, and I've got my friends in the background Rob, hey. Iceloid99, and Adam, Time Lord Fisher. Thanks so much for inviting me, guys. It's been an amazing day. I mean, honestly, honestly, some of the stuff that I've got today I never thought I could ever get. I mean, surely enough, everyone loves Kay Manning, but I got a photo with her. Not only that, photos with Paul McGann. I mean, the king of Big Finish, could you even imagine me ever meeting Paul McGann? No, he's the god of... And, of, of course, Finish. we all love that piece of celery on the on the, his shoulder. Peter Davison, of course. And not only that, the only person who could definitely play Omega in The Three Doctors, Stephen Fawn, of course. And you may be thinking, well, hang on, Alex, did you get a photo with all, the do all of the Doctors? Well, if, if he likes cow juice and he likes colourful jumpers, it's certainly him. Yes, I've got a photo with all of the doctors, with Katie Manning and Stephen Fawn, and then I've got some DVDs that I want you to show. Not all of them I got signed, but the majority of them, I definitely got, definitely got them signed. So, right now, school reunion, John Leeson, you will always be the best K9. And I think for me, this one is a very, very special one to me, because when I bought this when I was six, I wanted to meet K9, the actor, the guy who did the voice, and I wanted to meet him for so for so long, and life just could not get any better. Sometimes when you go to these conventions, you realise the truth that you're so lucky, you're so guaranteed, so many opportunities, and I've just been granted the biggest opportunity in this video to meet all of these people, get photos with them, and get signatures from them, especially my favourite story of all time, Remembrance of the Daleks. For she is the can't be here, but Sophie Aldred, who played Ace, signed it. What could be more better than that? As well as the most corrupted one that was given of all, the two doctors, both signed by Nicola Bryant and Colin Baker. So that was, was very, very great. And Colin is just such a lovely man. I really, really love him. Just wish he was my granddad. We all wanted to be <laughs> our granddad. Yeah. And so, yes, of course, all things have to come to an end, especially saying goodbye to these two as they're going back to Cardiff to do some more hanging out and seeing some more film locations. But me, I've got back to work, and plus, Manchester's my home, so I can't really leave it. So, but anyway, thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all next time in the next video from Adam and from uh, Rob and from me. We're out of here. See you guys next time. Goodbye. Hello there. <laughs> it is the end for the moment I've been prepared for. Bye bye!